The Crypto Markets Update is brought to you by KuCoin, the best place to find the next crypto gem. Joining us now to discuss the crypto markets is Glenn Goodman, crypto consultant at Israeli-based crypto exchange eToro. Welcome, Glenn. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you? So, uh, uh, not you bad. I mean, I've got to follow that guy, but I suppose you were sort of waiting. Yeah. This, is, this is the big interview that you've been waiting for right now, yeah? <laughs> this, is, yes. this is what everybody's been waiting for. You know, it's, I, I mean, look, you know, you, you, Scotty Pippen was your opening, uh, was your opening act, and this is, the, here it is. Um, so you said that, uh, you, you know, you, when looking at the markets, you say that uh, crypto, the, the bottom might be here. In, and you look at Google Trends, you're looking at magazine covers. Go, tell us a little bit more about your theory here. Okay, so when I'm talking about we're near the bottom, that doesn't necessarily mean we're at the bottom. I tweeted something a couple of weeks ago, for example, looking at um, previous capitulations in 2018-19 and, uh, and also the earlier one a few years earlier. What you see is that when you get the huge capitulation volume, as we saw uh, when FTX was uh, in the process of collapsing and huge amounts of crypto were sold at that time. What you tend to see is, you know, a big price spike downwards. And what that shows us from history is that that doesn't mark the exact bottom usually, but it means that you're kind of near it. And you know, that's the big one. And then maybe you're just going to kind of meander downwards for a while. And then you can go sideways, as we know, for ages, for a year sometimes, you know. So I'm not saying, wow, the, the fun's all going to be back anytime soon. But it does usually indicate when you get something like this that like most of the pain is over and there so, might just be a little dribbling of pain after that. Now, this Google Trends data, for example, is very interesting because you can see the searches there for Bitcoin is dead and crypto is dead. And as you can see, there was a big spike uh, when Luna collapsed earlier this year and then a not quite so big spike with FTX. And that's actually quite instructive that the spike um, in searches for Bitcoin and crypto is dead weren't quite as big the second time round. And that's because lots of people had already lost interest in the sector. And if you look back towards the beginning of that graph for the, uh, for the earlier years, you see a similar kind of thing happen then. You get a big spike of panic when, um, when pe most people are still in the sector, but that obviously clears quite a lot of people out. They lose interest for mm -hmm. a while. And so then when you get another scandal, the spike of, uh, of even of interest in crypto is dead isn't quite as big as it was before because a lot of people are already gone. So anyway, the point is that, you know, this is all normal and natural, believe it or not. I mean, I know that FTX collapsing and Luna collapsing didn't seem anything like natural at the time, but this is the kind of thing that we see um, towards the bottom of um, bear markets. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Obviously, it happens in traditional stock markets as well. It's because uh, so much optimism has left the sector by that point that, as we've seen with FTX, there are no white knights on the horizon. There's no one riding to the rescue uh, of the company because by that point in a bear market, um, all the optimistic, the big optimistic investors have pretty much fled the scene. Or if they haven't, then they're not willing to sort of put their money on the line any further. And so then the tide goes out. Companies like FTX have nowhere to hide. And uh, and you see a big washout. Uh, there are so other things I can mention. I don't know if you have time for me to talk about the magazine covers, for example. Well, I, I, I mean, we can. That actually is kind of part of, of my next question here, and that is this: We, when you have all these headlines, the, these negative headlines, doesn't it make it harder for institutions to get into uh, crypto? In other words, that it, while maybe not, it might not have washed everyone out, and you might get a few bottom feeders like what we're seeing here with Goldman Sachs right now looking, but, but they're only saying we're going to spend tens of millions, but not billions or hundreds of millions. They're kind of saying we're just going to see if we can if we can go bargain hunting. Tens of millions of dollars for Goldman is what they find in in the uh, you know on the floors of of the uh, lunchroom, but it, it's. Do you find that maybe perhaps all of this, even if it doesn't, even if the crypto is dead uh, searches aren't as high as they were before, all these negative headlines might have spooked away potential future investments. It's a lot harder for a portfolio manager to to say that they want to get into crypto after all these things. 
Yeah, I mean, that's definitely true. You know, there, there aren't huge numbers of people lining up with billions to invest at the moment. And as you just uh, showed on the screen there, that Economist headline, Crypto Downfall. And there was a similar one in Bloomberg uh, Business Week um, talking about uh, the sort of, you know, the death of or something along the lines of the, the death of FTX. Um, it's... It's always a difficult one because, you know, magazine covers aren't magic. They don't necessarily show you definitely at the bottom of the market. But, you know, I've been trading for more than 20 years now. And these magazine covers, they do show up, you know, on, on time, every time at the bottoms of markets. And you get the precise opposite at the tops of markets with, you know, sort of loads of gold bars saying, yes, it's a crypto frenzy or something along those lines. So, you know, it is a fair indicator that we're near the bottom. The Goldman thing, I think, is significant, even though it is relatively small amounts of money. The very fact that they were willing to come out and say, look, we're out here bargain hunting uh, really tells you how can crypto be dead? If crypto and Bitcoin are dead, they wouldn't be going out there declaring that they're bargain hunting. They're trying to do Warren Buffett here. They're saying, right. you know, be greedy when people are fearful, be fearful when people are greedy. They're saying, you know, we're, we're getting some bargains here. They see a future for crypto. No two ways about it. Glenn, let's bring up the Bitcoin dominance chart. And we see that Bitcoin's dominance rate has held steady at around 40%. What can you say about Bitcoin and its uh, trend relative to the rest of the markets? Well, a lot of people are complaining that Bitcoin hasn't become dominant enough during this bear market. Now, that's not necessarily a problem. The fact is that during the previous bear market, 2018-19, if you remember the boom of 2017, everything was Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Everyone was still obsessed with Bitcoin, right? So it was kind of natural that during the crypto crash, everybody would desert all these little cryptos that uh, they weren't particularly interested in and go to uh, Bitcoin. Whereas in this bear market, or rather in this previous bull market that we've just had, there was far more interest in crypto generally, and not so much emphasis on just Bitcoin itself. You know, people, ordinary people were asking me about cryptos. They weren't asking me about Bitcoin like they were in 2017. So the fact is that loads of these people were in for the crypto. And so now they've deserted the scene. They haven't returned to Bitcoin because a lot of these investors were simply never in Bitcoin in large numbers in the first place, if you see what I mean. It wasn't their priority. It never was. They were never sort of Bitcoin maxis like even ordinary people were in 2017. 